Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Pretty here. In today's video, I'll be introducing you to Flask User. So Flask User is an extension for Flask that gives you a lot of the common things that would be in a user registration or user system in an app out of the box. So by that, I mean things like sessions, login pages, uh, registration pages, emailing users when they register, uh, emailing confirmation links, links for changing passwords, um, anything like that where it's common to a user registration system or user login system, whatever you want to call it, Flask user gives it to you out of the box. And just know that generally when you're using extensions like this, they can save a lot of time for you if you are okay with the defaults or you are doing some minor modifications, but they do enforce a lot. So maybe it won't quite fit your app. So that's completely up to you once you uh, dive into Flask user. So I'll show you an example app here and then we'll get into the code. So here I have a home page that is unprotected. So you don't need to log in to see this page. But if I go to my profile route, a login is required and I see the sign in page. I didn't create the sign in page. This is from Flask user. So if I have a username and password, I can simply put them in. If I don't, then I can click here to register and I'll create a username and password. So let's try this password. If I try registering, it tells me that my password needs to be a little more complicated. So I'll put in a more complicated password. And this code is code that I did not write. This comes from Flask user. So when I register with my name, it sends me back to the home page as Anthony. And then if I go to the profile page, I can see it. And I'm, I can see it because I'm logged in. And if I go sign out, oops, excuse me, uh, slash user slash sign out, then I see this uh, my app sign in page again. And then if I go back to the profile routes, I'll get redirected to the login screen because I'm not logged in anymore. I'm not, I don't have an active session. So that's what we'll be building in this video. And it's actually fairly simple. So uh, like most Flask extensions, it doesn't take that much code to get up and running. But before I get to the code, I just want to show you prettyprinted.com. I've started adding Flask courses to prettyprinted.com. So here's an example of the homepage. Here's an example of one of the courses, Flask for Beginners. Uh, as you can see, there are many more videos than I would have on YouTube. I can cover things more in depth in the courses as opposed to on YouTube. And just know I'll be releasing a course on Flask extensions soon where I uh, dive deep into several Flask extensions like Flask user, Flask WTF, um, Flask admin, and various other extensions that are useful for any app. I'll be going into those and showing you how to do things in a more in-depth way than I do on YouTube. So now let's get to the code. So we'll see that the code is fairly simple. So first I'll import Flask, and then you have to be familiar with SQL Alchemy because it uses it as a base. It's not required, but it has support for it out of the box. So I forgot the L here. So from Flask, SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. And then from, I accidentally hit enter. Okay, so from Flask user, I have to import a few things. Login required, user manager, user mixin, and SQL Alchemy adapter. So I'll explain what all those mean once I get to them. So I'll initialize the Flask app, and then I'll put the if block for the app run at the bottom. It's going to be debug equals true. And then I'll add the configuration. So app config, and I only need four configuration values to start with. First is the secret key. Uh, this is used when the forms are being submitted and when the session is created. So this is a secret. And then the database URI, so SQL Alchemy database URI. I'll be using a SQLite database and it's going to be here for me. So I think it's documents, flask user slash database.db. I haven't created that yet, I'll create it in a moment. And then app config, 
I need CSRF enabled. This is for submitting the forms. So just put that to true. That's just configuration for Flask user. And then finally, user enable email. I want this to be false because I'm not covering emails in this video. I'll actually cover them in the next video. So just make sure that's false because if you uh, don't set it to false, then it's going to try to send an email by default and it won't work if you don't have the email configured. So now I need to um, instantiate the object for SQL Alchemy. So I'll just pass in the app. And now what I want to do is, before I even get into creating the model for the user, I'll simply create a SQLite database here. So uh, SQLite3database.db, and then there are no tables, so I can exit out. And then I'll create the user class. So the user class actually needs quite a few things from or for Flask user. So first thing it needs is the user mixin. So the user mixin is going to add some methods to the class that kind of determine if the user is logged in or not. Um, they're not really important to know unless you want to modify them, but they're things like is active, um, is authenticated, stuff like that. Just so Flask user knows who the active user is. So you need to include that user mix in when you uh, create your class. So there are some columns that you need and all these columns are needed for Flask users. So you can't uh, remove them. Uh, you can change the column name, but the actual attribute like ID has to be uh, the same. So ID is going to be DB column and I'm not gonna change the ID or the column names. I'm gonna leave them as is. So this is an integer column and it is the primary key followed by a username, db.column, db string needs to be 50 characters long. So this is all specified by Flask user. Um, unfortunately, there's no way for them to generate this for you because typically in your, in your user class, you'd probably have things that are unique to your app. So they can't force the user class on you, but they can tell you what you should have in your user class, which is what I'm doing right now. So nullable should be false and then unique should be true for the username password it's going to be hashed automatically by flask user it needs to be 255 characters long nullable should be false and the server server default should be an empty string then you'll have active db column and it's going to be a boolean column and this is basically saying if a user is active or not so nullable is false again and the server default is going to be zero for false and then a first name column. And this probably isn't even necessary. So I'll skip over the first name and the last name because they're not relevant to this video, but they can be uh, when your app gets more complicated. So once you have the user class, then you need to um, add this user class, to the database adapter, and then add the database adapter to the user manager. So Flask user kind of knows everything that's going on in your app. So it can modify things automatically. So first create the database adapter. So this is taking the SQL Alchemy adapter, passing in the SQL Alchemy object DB, and then the relevant user class. And then user manager is just instantiating Flask user in a sense. So you pass in the, the database adapter, which you just created above, and then the app. Okay, so that's it for setup for Flask user in this case. Now I need to create my routes. So I'll create the index route where it's going to say, this is the home page, And then I'll create the profile routes. So profile, and I'll say, this is the protected profile page. Okay, so that's it. So now I need to create the database before I get started because I haven't actually created the database. So Python, and then I'll import DB from app. I did that backwards from app import db and then db create all so I can create this table in my database. So if I look at it, SQLite 3 database, look at tables, I see the user table there now. And then once I have the table created, I can actually start my app. 
and then I'll go to the route. So the home page and the profile page. But like I said, I want the profile page to be protected. So what I need to do is I need to add the login required decorator to this route. So underneath the, the specification of the endpoint, I add login required, and that will then make this route protected and only accessible by people who are logged in. So if I go to it now, I get automatically redirected to this sign-in screen. And as you can see in my code, I didn't write anything for a sign-in screen. I didn't have to create a template or anything like that or a route to handle it. Uh, it got created automatically. So I'll register and I'll add a username and a password. Register. And then it sends me back to the home page automatically. And then I'll go to the profile page and I can see it. So that means I'm logged in and I'm an active user. So pretty simple stuff. As you can see, it makes things really easy for you. Uh, it's user slash sign out that I'm looking for. And the routes that it creates for you automatically among others are sign in. So your application slash user slash sign in is for the sign in. And then the register is going to be slash user slash register. And then sign out is slash user slash sign dash out. So just keep that in mind when you're working your app so you know which routes that you're actually using to um, log in the user, sign out the user, and register the user. So that's pretty simple. Um, and it provides a ton of functionality for you out of the box. So if you just want to throw together a quick login system for your app, Flask user is a really good way to go. So in the next video, I'll cover how to add the email capabilities to this because I didn't want to cover that in this email because there, in this video because there's extra setup. So I'll cover that in the next video. And for this video, just know I have a code available. Just click, click the link in the description below to get the code for this video and you can download the code. So that's it for this video. Um, check out prettyprinted.com for class courses. So for this video, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.